Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have got six Chardonnays in front of me on what at the moment is a sunny day, um, which any second now is threatening, threatening to turn into a hailstorm. But with these wines in front of me, how can I fail to have anything but a sunny disposition? So I've got some from the countries that uh, you associate with Chardonnay. Uh, so I've got a Chablis, for example, I've got a couple of Australians, and I've got a Californian. But I've also got something from the Veneto, maybe not the home of Chardonnay, maybe the home of Pinot Grigio, or is it? Let's have a see. But the first one I've got is from England, and it's Hush Heath Estate, Skies English Chardonnay, Vintage 2010. Let's see how this fares. I did the Chapel Down 2010 Chardonnay uh, a few videos ago, and it was looking pretty good. Let's see how this compares. Well, it smells clean, bright, and nutty. Uh, the, the other one, the Chapel Down one, reminded me of, of well, what I put in my notes was like Macon fruit, Chablis acidity. This one seems to have more on the Chablis side, that slightly, uh, ever so slightly stony, flinty character. Um, Piercing citrus fruit, uh, maybe a bit of the apple in there as well. And it smells like it's going to be light, fresh, uh, dainty on its feet. Let's see whether it really is. Clean, crisp, bracing style. Little, maybe a little bit of salty minerality going on in there as well as the uh, flintiness. Tasty. And, uh, I mean, two 2010 Chardonnays I've had from England this year. And they've both been pretty good and I'd be very happy to serve them to anybody. No idea how much that is, but... Um, um, certainly no reason to serve it just for reasons of patriotism. It's, uh, it's a good wine. Let's see how we get on with the next one. What, what I've done is I've organised them by alcohol, so uh, it, it's no surprise that you end up with an Australian as wine number six. But I've also got an Australian at wine number two, in the form of Ocean 8 Verve Chardonnay. Yes, yeah, so the English Chardonnay was 11%. Uh, this one's just 12.2 from the Mornington Peninsula. And uh, I think one of the ideas of, this, uh, of uh, the, the style that they're trying to achieve there is something that's on that bracing, almost shabbly type uh, character. Let's see whether it is in practice. Actually, when I smell it, it's more, um, it feels like it's come from somewhere richer in Burgundy. It feels like there's a, a slight toasty spent match character. Uh, the fruit uh, has got this slightly, almost a honey edge to uh, cooked apple flavours. And, um, but there's uh, the, the, the zest and uh, there's what I call life beyond fruit behind it. There's a, there's a touch of the soil coming through here. It smells like it's going to be really tasty. Touch of creamy nuttiness from a bit of oak and uh, oak aging, but also some leaves character. Quite weighty fruit, and then when you think it's going to go all that a little bit just too big, then there's this precise, pure acidity finishing it off and, uh, yeah, making it come to this nice, vibrant, lively finish. Oh, honestly, the sort of wine that, uh, uh, if people haven't seen what modern Australian Chardonnay can be like, serve them a glass of that. It's a uh, pretty tasty wine. Let's see whether how it compares with Chablis. And uh, the Chablis I've got here is uh, Simone Febre 2010 Vintage. Not as jump out of the glassy, that's a new term, as the, uh, as the uh, Ocean 8 was, but uh, there's still, uh, it feels like there's a precise apple and citrus backbone here, and it feels like there's some, some creaminess around it that needs to unfurl a bit before you see it in its true colours. Six months younger than the uh, Ocean 8, so um, uh, maybe it just needs a little bit of agitation, so I'll give it some before I try it. And that green apple thread carries on through it. Um, it's a bracing young wine, Still quite a way off its peak. Uh, I'd ideally give it an, at least another year. I know some people won't be able to do that and they'll be on to the 2011 uh, vintage before you can say Bob's your uncle. But um, what I like uh, about it is it doesn't feel like there's anything missing. So there is the fruit there. There's the backbone. There's this, the acidity to keep it all fresh, keep it all together. And there's this richer, nuttier, ever so slightly um, creamy uh, character that, 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 that comes through. Good. I think the Ocean 8 is better. And 12.2% alcohol for an Australian Chardonnay. So I'm still going to look at that and go, ooh. But uh, it, was, it was very good, that. Anyway, let's see whether the next one is very good. This is um, Alpha Zeta, uh, or Alpha Zeta. I know, I'm not sure whether I should say Zeta or Zeta. Anyway, Alpha Zeta Chardonnay uh, from the Veneto. Vintage 2011. And it's an IGT. And weighing in at, uh, we're up to 13% alcohol here.
probably a bit unfair to put it here in the lineup despite that high alcohol so when I come to smell it I get that bubble gummy character um, of uh, a cool fermentation with certain types of yeast uh, beyond there there's this vague uh, creaminess and uh, a, a bit of citrus zing doesn't feel like it's going to be uh, a great wine um, and, and there's almost for me a touch of under ripeness here manifesting itself in what I call a smoky elderflower character. So it smells okay, but um, I think uh, the, the three before will have uh, maybe just, uh, will we'll, we'll, uh, outclass it. Oh, I may be wrong. It's okay, um, perfectly decent. There's a bit of um, uh, slight smokiness. I think it, uh, part of it's been in oak for a while, um, but there's nothing really there that makes me want to uh, jump up and down and uh, take another glass full. So let's move on to the next one, which is Wenty Morning Fog Chardonnay from the Livermore Valley, San Francisco Bay, and it's 2010 vintage. Here we're up to 13.5% alcohol. Vanilla fudge, um, maybe not the sort of character I want in a, in a fine Chardonnay. Feels like there's some pear and peach behind it, but uh, it's this slightly muddy, slightly crude vanilla character that seems to be dominating it at the moment. It smells okay, but uh, doesn't smell like it's going to be as fine as I would like it to be. Okay, but simple. Um, there's this slightly, as I say, this fudge-like vanilla character that uh, muddies the finish. It's okay. Uh, yeah, not not raving about that. Let's see whether I rave about the final one, which is Lewin Estates. Um, not their top Chardonnay, not the art series, but this is the Prelude series. Uh, sorry, Prelude Vineyards, a Chardonnay, both from Margaret River, uh, 2009, and this one weighs in at 14%. It's higher alcohol than the, the Wenty was, but it feels like it's going to have a finer, purer, um, yeah, higher cheekbones. Uh, so there's, a, there's more of that, back to that zesty crispness here. Um, it, it, the Wenty felt that little bit too soft, and uh, I don't know whether that, where that vanilla fudge air, uh, air thing was coming from, I suspect from uh, a certain type of oak. But here, you're back to something that's precise. Um, it, yes, it's, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't smell like it's going to be 14% alcohol. It smells like it's going to have a bit of precision, a bit of class, and uh, maybe not as rich as its big brother, the art series, but um, still smells good. And then when you come to taste it, the ripeness and the roundness kick in. Um, what they've not done is, oak, is swamped it with oak. It fe I, in fact, it uh, feels almost like they've hardly used any oak at all. I wouldn't be surprised though if they'd uh, aged it in uh, used barrels uh, and ones that had not been just been used once or twice, but maybe even some older ones. So in terms of oak flavour influence, uh, you're not really getting any any of those. But um, uh, in, in terms of the oak uh, maturing influence, the softening of the wine, um, yes, there is this, this edge of acidity that's, uh, that's keeping your mouth enlivened and entertained. Um, but uh, the fruit flavours have just softened that, that little bit. So yes, there's a, uh, the, I was saying about pear on, uh, uh, the, the, I think, the previous one. Uh, here, there's a very uh, very tart pear edge. So yeah, those, pe those pears, those, well, those are the ones that have got slightly russet type skins that you bite into and there's a grittiness and there's a greenness about them. I get that, get the citrus, get the apple. I like it, uh, but uh, for me, I mean, it, it, it's, it's strange to, to find myself saying this, I actually prefer the English one to that one, uh, but the Ocean 8 is the star of this range for me. Uh, very, very classy wine, and as I say, will change people's opinion of Australian Chardonnay. But I've enjoyed these, slight dip in the middle, but um, overall, rather good. See you soon.